Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how to make these Harry Potter pillows. I have Harry here, Hermione and Ron. They have no eyes. I don't know, I just thought they would look cooler with no eyes. I don't know, let me know. I just thought it, it, it's not creepy. It's, it's, it's okay, I think. Um, <laughs> I have made a few sets of these pillows for Christmas. I think they are going to be really cool Christmas presents. And I've made an extra set for one of you guys. So um, yeah, giveaway time for Christmas. So um, stay tuned until the end of the video. I'll talk to you at the end about the giveaway. One thing that I'd like to have a bit of feedback on is on how I'm going to give you the pattern. Um, I have a app on my phone on my phone that scans um, documents and um, that's how I'm going to give it to you so I'm not sure if it's going to work properly especially I do not have a printer so it's a bit hard for me to test drive them so if you can let me know if it works so if it doesn't I can give you the pattern in a different way so yeah let me know in the comment section down below so let's get going with the tutorial shall we and look at this awesome shirt this is from Primark, six pounds. I thought it was rather fitting with the theme of for DIY for today. <laughs> All right, let's get going with the tutorial. Bye. All right, people, let's get started with the DIY. As you can see here on the screen, I have three pieces of cream color fabric and three of black. And this is going to be my base for my cushions. And all the information you might need for this DIY will be on my Facebook page or everything about the pattern and stuff. So what we are going to use is this little white sheet of fusing which is Bondaweb and it's basically a double-sided fusing and we are going to make appliques for this DIY. Alright, so for doing the applique what you will need is the piece of fabric that you want to do your applique with. So in this case it's a piece of my scarf and I'm going to put it wrong side up and I'm going to put the piece of Bondaweb on top of it. I'm going to make sure the textured bit is onto the wrong side of my fabric. That's the piece with the glue. And I'm going to set the whole thing with an iron and I'm going to make sure I, I press it down and I make sure I put a lot of heat into it so the two are bounded together. As you can see I have protected my ironing board with a piece of crease proof paper and this is just optional but just in case there's always a bit of glue going off. And before you peel it off I would advise you to wait until it is cooled down. So once you have applied the bundle web to all the hair pieces and the scarf and the glasses pieces, we can put them to our cushion base. So I'm going to start off with Harry's hair and I'm going to peel the backing off uh, the back of the fabric. And as you can see, the paper comes off, but the glue stays on the fabric. So now what I'm going to do is set it on the top of my uh, square and I'm going to set the whole thing with a lot of heat so you will need to iron it well until everything is stuck together. Once your hair piece is glued on your base, um, we are going to move on to the scarf bit. So to start off with, I'm going to take uh, the bottom of my square and I'm going to mark up the middle. So I'm going to work from the middle towards the sides so everything will be well balanced through all the three cushions. And I'm going to take my uh, scarf bits and peel the backing off and place them on my cushion. Make sure that everything is leveled together and then I'm going to set the whole thing with my iron. And I'm going to add a pieces all along the bottom row until I have a full scarf. Next we are going to finish Harry's face with his glasses. So to gain on some time I just glued the glasses on a rectangle of uh, bundle web, which means I have some pieces of glue sticking out. You need to get them trimmed off before you glue the whole thing, otherwise it will glue to your fabric and get some residue or on your iron which uh, would be very difficult to clean up. And next I will uh, place the glasses onto the base and I'm going to make sure it's centered and whenever I'm happy with it I will uh, set the whole thing with heat again. I'm also going to check the placement uh, that everything is balanced with my measuring tape just in case and I'm going to use the middle section uh, as a guide. 
So the two middle pieces, the yellow and the red ones, are going to serve me as a guide for placing my glasses. Then you're going to repeat the process with Ron's cushion, except you won't have any glasses and you just need the two hair pieces and the same amount of scarf pieces. For Hermione's cushion, the only different thing is that I'm only going to put four pieces for the scarf because the rest is going to be covered by her hair. I've decided to go for her bushy hair style like she has in the first few books and um, it's more iconic I think but you could change the style if you wanted to. So that's how your cushion bases should look like so far. It's a time-consuming process but it will pay off at the end. The bonder web will be there to help you out with the applique process. It stick it gets your pieces stuck together, uh, so it will allow you to finish your pieces off uh, without your pieces moving on you. So now what you need to do is finish the whole thing off with putting a zigzag stitch around all of your edges to set them together. Um, every machine is different, so you will need different settings for different machines. So I would advise you to do a few trials on scraps of fabric to find the right settings for you. For me, the length of my stitch was 1 and the width was 4, but it might be different for you. For Ron's freckles, all I did is uh, take some threads and a sewing needle and just put a few uh, stitches here and there to do the freckles. Uh, but you could go with permanent marker if you wanted to. Next, on the bottom of all of my squares, even the backing, I have done an overlocking stitch just so it won't fray on me later on. If you do not have an overlocker, you can just do a zigzag stitch within the seam allowance. Next, we are going to mark where the zipper is going to go. So I'm going to use a 20 cm zipper and I'm going to mark up the bottom of my square. So I'm going to do a marking at 7 cm in from each side of my square. So in between those two markings, my zipper will go. Then I'm going to take one of the front and one of the back, put them together, right sides together and make sure that the pieces with my zigzag stitch are together. And what we're going to do is sew a straight line, a regular stitch from the side to the marking, a longer stitch in between, and then a regular stitch again. And that's where you're going to put your zipper. Uh, if you want to know how to put a zipper in, I have a tutorial already on that on my Totoro pencil case, so I'm going to put a a uh, link down below for you to check out if you want to know how to put a zipper in. So next we are going to put the cushion together. So you're going to put those two pieces back together, right sides together, and we are going to do a straight stitch with a one centimeter seam allowance. Make sure that your zipper is open, otherwise, uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit complicated to uh, turn your work inside out. <laughs> Trust me, I've tried already and uh, no, it's not easy. <laughs> so make sure your zipper is open. So to sew around the corner is very easy. What you need to do is stop sewing a few stitches away from your corner and then what you're going to do is walk your stitches. Basically it's doing it manually with your wheel on your side of your needle. Remember to always turn your uh, wheel towards yourself. And once you're at uh, your corner, what you're going to do is leave your needle down, put your presser foot up turn your uh, fabric around until you're happy and then keep on sewing. As long as your needle is down, you can do whatever you want with it. Once everything is sewn together, you can overlock all your raw edges or do a zigzag stitch so your uh, fabric won't fray that easily. And then what you need to do is clip your corners so you will have neat corners when everything is turned inside out. What you need to make sure is that you do not clip your sewing line. Then you're ready to turn it and to stuff it. Alright guys, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you found it somehow helpful, <laughs> hopefully. So now for the giveaway. Um, so please be a subscriber and set your subscription on public so I can see it. It's open internationally, so um, yeah. No limits. I'm going to give it to you flat with no stuffing into it so that way it's a lot easier to send it. Uh, so it will be up to you to put some stuffing. On it I have only like regular pillow stuffing into it. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
be 18 or over or at least have the uh, permission from your parents simply because you will have to trust me with sensitive information as your address and maybe your parents don't want a stranger over the internet knowing where you live so be sure they are okay with it not that I'm a stalker or serial killer or anything like this but you never know no seriously I'm not <laughs> It's okay, I'm French, I'm, I'm not a serial killer, it's okay. Um, <laughs> and the last thing, I need to know that you are entering the giveaway. So please let me know what other character you'd like to see transform into a pillow so I can get this series going. I thought it was really fun and I'd like to keep it going. So if there is any request that you have, just leave them down below and I will know that you are entering the giveaway by the same token. Alright, I'll see you later, bye!